Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. We we got a, a, a crowd with us tonight because we're going to talk about your websites and how to get the rest website. And Joe Davis is with us and his team. And if you've got questions about websites or social media or all those kinds of things, these are the people to talk to. Right, Mr. Woodham? Are we ready here? I think we're, we're as ready as we're going to be. Let's uh, oh. let's launch this Apollo rocket, shall we? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's light this candle. Voiceover body shop right now which one of us is playing the video uh so i guess job? i will all right <laughs> I, I know it's here somewhere there it is <laughs> now from the outer reaches they came bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio and together from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. It's us. It worked. Of course it works. Hi, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Okay, good enough. Ah, uh, well, we have a crowd tonight uh, because we're going to talk about websites. And uh, so if, if you've got questions on that, throw them in the chat room, depending on where you're watching. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, because I know Jeff Holman is in there in both chat rooms and is directing those things right to us. So we yes, can he is. answer those questions. If you've got a website that perhaps you built or something, we'd like to see it. And Joe's staff over at VoiceOver... <laughs> actor voice actor websites.com one of our sponsors uh will uh they'll take a look at it and they'll give a few comments on it and uh we're going to talk about what makes a good website and all those sorts of things so hey, you mind if i rearrange the room for a second sure go ahead that there works thank you i was feeling awkward that now now, now <laughs> that you've got control of this you're you're going nuts with it <laughs> anyway it's time to introduce our our guest somebody who's been with us a bunch of times before uh joe davis has over 18 years of experience working in digital marketing and web development and has spent the last 10 years focused on the world of voiceover why we're not sure uh during that time he has developed numerous websites internet platforms and marketing plans for voice actors agents voiceover businesses and other vo professionals he loves helping entrepreneurs shape and develop their ideas into viable businesses this includes the entire process from conceptualization all the way to implementation. So let's welcome our good friend, Joe Davis. Hello. Hello, guys. How you doing? Uh, you know, I, I heard you say 18 years, and I think it's said that for the past three years. So it should probably so be 21, 21 years. Two. Okay. Let me Who's change that. <laughs> I go by what's on your website, you know, so. I, I, I forget to update my website. That's How not ironic. What, that's not what we want to hear. <laughs> Too busy, you're a busy guy. <laughs> you know what we say, like the mechanic drives the, the, the dumpiest car. It's like I'm a voice actor, voiceover studio designer without a studio. So hey. Good who point. Am I, who am I to judge? I was actually yeah. at my mechanic today and he is driving a very nice Acura. 
Okay, that's a good sign. <laughs> makes, makes sense. <laughs> All right. So, Joe, you know, you are a very successful digital age entrepreneur. I guess that's the best way to describe you. You've started a bunch of internet related companies, as it said. What brought you to voiceover of all the things you could be doing with all, this, all these industries and all these things? What brought you into this? You, it's all your fault. Oh, thanks. I'll be going now. <laughs> so actually, that's very much the case. Um, so I, uh, when I was in Buffalo um, with Dan and uh, we, uh, we were actually um, on the, involved in a nonprofit together. And uh, I, I did digital marketing at that point for other types of businesses, uh, law firms and such. And I was looking for other industries that were similar, where you had essentially small businesses that needed to market themselves online. And Dan asked me to help with uh, some of his marketing needs and then said, hey, you know, I've, I've got this show. Um, why don't you come on VoiceOver Body Shop? And so I, I knew very little about the industry at that point. But um, Dan was a very good friend and I figured it would be interesting and, you know, who knows what would happen. So uh, came on, met, met George. Uh, at that point, it was actually eWabs. It was East West Audio Body yeah, Shop. I was, That's I was still in Buffalo. Yeah. Still in Buffalo. Right. And um, went on the show and it was it was a heck of a lot of fun. And I didn't really know what would happen the next day. What happened the next day is I got a whole bunch of emails from voice actors saying, can you help me? <laughs> and so I said, hmm, there, I, I think there's, there's something here. And so um, spent about a year learning about voiceover, um, started doing some voiceovers, uh, getting involved in conferences, et cetera. And, and then said, you know, I, th this, this has all the ingredients of um, something I want to do. It, it, the people are amazing. The, uh, um, the industry is, is interesting. And it's exactly what we were looking for. It's small businesses that need to market themselves online. And so launched voice actor websites and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, Karen was a huge part of the, the reason that we were able to grow. And um, now we, we've got dozens of people on our team and we work with thousands of, of talent, uh, production companies, ad agencies, casting directors, et cetera. So, it's been a, a really fun, interesting ride. And again, um, you're, you're looking at the reason. Well, oh, and I apologize every week, don't I? <laughs> anyway, why don't you introduce your team of folks here so we can uh, we can get into the discussion really about you know, what every why people need a, vo uh, a, a voice actor website uh, and those sorts of things. So why don't we go around and why don't you just introduce them? Sounds good. So uh, can I see them or am I just going to do it? Just shout out a name and I'll throw them up. Uh, let's do Karen Barth. Okay, Karen. There she is. There she blows. <laughs> so um, Karen is our director of operations and basically is involved in everything that we do from building websites to SEO and digital marketing to social to um, just making sure that everybody's happy and doing what they should be doing and um, she's amazing. So uh, that's Karen. I was going to say in a nutshell, but she's actually more in an outdoor enclosure with uh, nice green leaves on top. <laughs> Looks like a Greek restaurant. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, let's do Cameron. Cameron. Alrighty. There he is. So Cameron is our head project manager, um, a professional VO talent, super nice guy, and um, knows a tremendous amount about the voiceover industry. When, when we actually first started talking, I realized he was one of those guys that had been doing voiceover for a long time, knew a tremendous amount about it, and I had never seen on the um, speaking circuit, you know, at the voiceover conferences and on the, the shows and such because he was too busy actually doing voiceover. And so um, I, I knew I wanted him on our team and uh, he now manages a lot of the, the websites that we build working with both the clients and our team to, to get it done with our designers and our coders and such. Okay. Who's next? Uh, let's do Laura. All righty. There she is. There is Laura in the mysterious room. <laughs> with the uh, interrogation light on her. Uh, so Laura is um, 
an expert in uh, content writing and SEO, on-page SEO factors. So um, when I will talk a little bit more about what that means, but basically in SEO, there's a, a division between on-page and off-page things that can help your site rank well. And um, Laura is our director of content, um, SEO and content. And so um, anytime there are questions about what kind of things should I be writing? How much content should I be publishing? Uh, what type of information is attractive to humans and search engines, that kind of thing. She's the gal to ask and uh, she oversees our writing team. So all of our writers report to Laura. Okay. And Alan Shires. Ah, excellent. There is the infamous Alan. Uh, so Alan is on the other side of the pond. So he's staying up late for us, which I appreciate. We do. And um, Alan is a pro voice talent, actor, um, social media guru, uh, casting guy, and uh, father, uh, and all kinds of other things. So um, he's, a, he's a great dude, knows a tremendous amount about different aspects of the industry. And he'll be good to talk to about social media strategies, what works, what doesn't, what platforms to use, that kind of thing. Excellent. And then, then we got Whittem in here somewhere. There he is. In case, in case you got me questions. I was busy <laughs> typing in the background. You weren't okay. supposed to see me. No, it's okay. okay. I, can, I, I can take you out if you want. That's fine. No, no, no. It's cool. I'm here. Okay. If, I, if I'm picking my nose, I'll just take myself out of the shot. Oh, there we go. All I'll right. take myself out of the shot and then pick my nose in that order. Yeah. Can I pick? Wait. Okay. Just send me a message and then I'll take you out of the shot and you can pick your nose. <laughs> Why don't we start with Karen, who, who, who really runs a lot of this operation. And, and hello, dear. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. That's good. So let me let me ask you, why do you think every voice talent needs to have a website? It's your online calling card. People need to hear you and hire you. What better way than digitally on the web, a place for them to get a, a taste of what you sound like and a feel for your, your vibe, your sound, and uh, be able to contact you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... What, what are the vital elements that you have to have when you're talking to, to clients, when they, they're, you're on the phone with them or doing Zoom or whatever, what are the things that you tell them, you need to have this? And, you know, so what, what do you ask them? What are, you, what are the things that, where, what are the things you think they need? We need pro demos that are downloadable on the site and labeling them correctly. So don't label them commercial demo because if somebody downloads them and then wants to call you back well who does this demo belong to right. so you need to have the file names right um get testimonials if you have ability to have testimonials on your site a client list a bio maybe some descriptors of your voice um like a vocal profile the age ranges you do um what else studio information important to have on there and whether you have source connect or not if you have source connect list it a contact form, a video. If you have video, super engaging, keeps people on the site longer. So that's also great to have. Yeah, those are basic. And then obviously contact information, email and phone number. How do I get a hold of you once I hear you and I want to hire you? I, I would think that would be like the top thing on there, wouldn't it? It <laughs> makes it kind of important. Uh, the thing is, is now, now voice actor websites, you create websites specifically for voice actors. And the idea is, you know, people want to get it done as quickly as possible, you know, because they're, they're just starting out and they want to have their website up because it's a vital part of what they have to have. What slows the process of creating a website and, and how can people help themselves make the process faster? Oftentimes they don't have their demos when they're contacting us at first. So you got to have the demos or being, you know, at that finishing line where you're about to get them. If it takes a month, a month and a half to get a site done, then have your demos ready or by that time. That's the first and foremost. Um, you know, getting together an idea of what you want your look to be. And if you don't, then, you know, we can work on that together, but have some sort of idea. Maybe have, ask your friends, ask people who you work with, colleagues. What do, what do you think my sound sounds like? So you can get kind of an idea of how you might want the, the site to look and feel. Right. You want to get your branding right, you know, the, and so yeah. it works with your website. Exactly. Think about a bio. Lead in with, you know, the stuff that has to do with VO. End with a backstory if you want to add a backstory. Yes, Joe? I, I just wanted to add, uh, Karen mentioned bio, and it's surprising 
how many voice actors who speak for a living and are very eloquent um, with the spoken word uh, have challenges writing their own bios. And I think everybody, you know, has a, a difficulty writing about themselves. But um, that I think is one of the biggest sticking points is actually, how do I want to present myself online? And, you know, some people just feel that they're not good writers, but even people who feel that they're good writers often are not sure how to represent themselves. Um, and, you know, what's interesting about me, what's interesting and related to VO versus, you know, just a random fact and should I put random facts? And so um, the, the bio, as Karen said, is something I, I think the the aesthetic. So how, how do I want to be um, visually represented and the, the written word? how do I want to be represented in, in words are probably the two biggest things because they're both subjective. There, there's not necessarily a right answer. What's right for one person isn't um, always right for the other. And, and just an example of that is, you know, half the people we, uh, we talk to say, um, whatever you do, I want a microphone on my website. And the other half say, whatever you do, I don't want a microphone on my website. It's very cliche. Right. And so, you know, it, it's just um, aesthetic is subjective. Yes. Yeah. And, and people hate to write and talk about themselves, oddly enough. So yeah. <laughs> a lot of, of I would say a lot of voice talent don't like to write their own buyers. They don't like to write about themselves. They don't like to boast about themselves, at least in the bio sense. Right. So. Once again, we're talking with the folks from voice actor websites uh, tonight. If you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. More importantly, if you want us to take a look at your specific website, We'd love to get that. So if you can, in, in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook or on YouTube, give us some URLs and let's go in and look at some of these websites and see what, uh, what, what you're doing, whether you're doing it right or doing it wrong or whatever. So uh, hopefully uh, Jeff, Jeff Holdman will get a hold of those and forward those to us so we can take a look at those. Uh, let's see here. What are some other things? Now you folks, the other folks you've got with us, we've got, we've got Alan and we've got Laura and we've got Cameron. What are your thoughts on these sorts of things about, you know, Cam, what, what, what do you think about, uh, you know, what, what people can do to really improve the process? Yeah. And, and that's exactly where I come in. I mean, when people go to our site at voiceactorwebsites.com, um, they, they look at our packages, they can chat with one of our, uh, our intake strategist, um, Paul Matthews. And he can discuss some of the packages and the pricing and see what, uh, what's a good fit for you at the time. And then when, then, uh, I take it from that point and try to make the process of building, designing and building your site as simple as possible, as easy for you as possible. I hear people, they tried to build their own websites. They got mired into the weeds and, and they just got frustrated and gave up. I just want to make that process as simple and, and as pleasant for you as possible. I mean, cause I did my site through these guys a few years ago. And I enjoy the process. So here I am, and I just want to return the favor. So basically taking, like talking with uh, the voiceover talent, talking about what their vision is, kind of clarifying those, getting their demos together, getting their bio together, talk about all the elements that they want to uh, see on their site, pile that together. And then what I do is then make that process. I work with the designers, the coders behind the scenes to put the site together for them. So that's the process that, that I enjoy doing and I want to make as easy as possible. Or as, as you said, Dan, in the intro, make it as least uh, or less a pain in the butt as possible. And, um, and some of the things that can delay, um, like Karen mentioned, the demos. Uh, sometimes branding, you know, some people put the pressure on themselves to come up with a brand, you know, and some people just starting out may not have a brand. And they may just sort of get caught up in the weeds on that, but really doesn't have to be that difficult. So branding can be an issue right off the bat. Maybe people want to think about that a little bit more, but we help with that. Um, we always have an eye towards branding, whether you have one or not, whether it develops right off the bat or not, maybe it develops down the road. We're always here to talk about that sort of thing. Um, demos, like I said, um, photos. Um, is another one that, um, you know, some people kind of weigh their options. Like, <clears throat> do I want a picture of myself on my site or not? And you can debate that argument all day long, but, you know, having those done, you know, ahead of time 
or maybe you're planning on getting those done. That's one of the things that can, you know, kind of delay the process a little bit. But we always um, try to help out with that, give tips on, you know, what to do, what not to do for a head uh, for a headshot. In fact, we were just talking about that this week with our team. So those are just a few things. But again, my role is to make that process as pleasant for you as possible. And that's basically what I do. Yeah. Laura, what about you? What are, what are your thoughts on that? I was I was just thinking as Cameron was talking that um, how important it is in this day and age when everything is just going so fast and it, everything is digital that um, you have to find a way to represent yourself out there and on, on the web, online, and it really needs to be you. It needs to be your personality. It needs to be the colors you like. Um, but it does, sorry, it does have to have a photo. <laughs> For SEO purposes, it has to have a photo. It, and that's about building trust. So once you get your site all built together, it has all the pieces, then you're going to start building trust. And that's, that's what I do with, with the artist is start to pot, compile all of the things and all of the resources that says, you know, I'm an artist, I'm part of your community, and this is what I have to share. Yeah. Alan, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, branding and, and all of these things. And I think one of the most important things is what is your conviction as as it's your website what is your conviction if you're not entirely sold on that website or if there's a part of it which makes you feel unsure then guess what you're probably not advertising it very well to those clients that you're wanting to share it with uh, so what do you do in that scenario well that's one of the amazing things about um, the voice actor websites and also sharing in um, settings like this is that you can get some input and maybe somebody can go oh maybe if that color was different or if the photo was in a different angle uh, and and you know not being scared to try new things uh, different colors different font styles um, moving some of the pages around trying different things until you find something that you're super confident with uh, because that will show if you're not confident with your website it will, it will show mm. Absolutely. Once again, uh, we're talking with Joe Davis and uh, his team at voiceactorwebsites.com. We'd like to take a look at your website, if possible. So give us some of those, your URLs. Don't be shy. It's, this is a TV show. We want to see what you guys are up to. We want to see what's out there. Um, when, when you're, you know, people are just starting out in the voiceover business. You know, we say you got to have a website. But it sounds like most people have no idea what they want or they're graphic designers or they're really creative people and they want to go all out. What do you do to try and convince them that perhaps less is more and, and, and perhaps not say, well, I want this. I want the apostrophe over here and I want the color scheme like that. How, how do you handle that, Karen? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, meaning... If you want it all, you can have it all. Sometimes it needs to be dialed back a little bit because you don't want to distract uh, what people are coming there to see but or hear you and do. Um, but yeah, I mean, every site has to be unique and feel like that person. If your sound is, you know, kind of mellow and just real and chill, and then you have this like chaotic site, there's a disconnect, right? So you just wanted to make sure it matches, like it makes sense. But yeah, I mean, there's so many different looks, there's no right or wrong, it just has to feel right for you. And who is your end? Who is your end client? Right? What right. is your target market? So that would also play a part in how your site should look. I, I just want to add on to what Karen said about target market. So, you know, if you um, love fun animated things and you have bright colors on your website and a, a picture of a, a cartoon here um, and you do e-learning, that's a, a disconnect. But if you have a very clean corporate site and you do corporate narration, that you know is related. So I think people can overthink branding and overbrand and they can also underbrand. So when you're when you're starting out, I think it's more about coming across as professional. Hey, I know what I'm doing. You know, if you were hiring an accountant and they had a website that didn't function right or, or didn't look professional, you wouldn't necessarily hire them. So same thing with a voice talent when they're starting out. If you brand yourself in the beginning too much, you may end up positioning yourself as something that either limits you in, in VO or ends up not being what you, you book in. So maybe you, you start out thinking, you know, I'm gonna do commercial and animation, but then you, you find this great niche 
in um, promo and IVR. There's a lot of different avenues within voiceover. And so I, I think ultimately a brand is a, is a great thing and it will make you memorable. And there are, are ways to create a brand, either that position you really well for, for one or two things or for a wide variety of things. But when you're starting out, I think it's more about coming across as professional. All right. Absolutely. And, and just Go ahead, to, Karen. I just was going to say, um, you know, oftentimes people start out and they're like, oh, I want to do this. This is this is the genre I want to go into. And the business actually pulls them in a completely different direction. And a lot of people actually almost rebrand after two years. So I feel like, you know, yes, it's great to have a, a, a brand that's solid. If it's something that's going to sustain over time and that it's it kind of encompasses a lot and it really represents you good. But if you um, if you think you're going in one direction, the, the business might pull you in another. And so you might end up changing your brand after two or three years. Absolutely. Once again, we'd love to take a look at your websites. We're going to do that in just a couple of minutes. So make sure you put those in the chat room if you if you dare. Uh, and we will uh, we will take a look at, uh, at all those websites. Let me get out of here. There we go. George and I are directing this in tandem tonight. So we have no idea like, well, you know, you take this shot. No, you take that shot. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> directing by committee. Never. <laughs> Flashback to a bad independent film I worked on once. Let's figure out this. <laughs> oh, too soon. Yeah. And if you have um, any questions, anyway, of course, throw them yeah, in. I, yeah, I'm going to be screen sharing the, uh, the, the websites. I have them on this side. So when you're ready, let me know and I'll start throwing them up on the screen. We'll do that. We got a couple of questions from our audience so far. Uh, the first one is, is uh, she has a, do we need to have any privacy disclosures listed on a website? Is, is that an issue? It depends when you say need to. So there are, there are different privacy standards all over the world. Now um, the UK has its own Europe has its own, not that the UK is not part of Europe, but they have two separate uh, privacy standards that they follow. Um, California, which sometimes is, you know, thought of as its own country has its own privacy standard. And so in general, if you are collecting information about your visitors and all websites nowadays are, whether you realize it or not, pretty much all websites have cookies, have uh, contact forms, et cetera. And so you're, you're collecting information about your visitors. And so it's a good idea to have some sort of privacy policy on there, which says what you're doing with their private data, which is usually nothing. You know, most voice actors are not intentionally collecting data. They're not selling it or anything, but um, have, a, have a privacy policy and say that. And it's actually, so the, um, the European uh, privacy standard is called GDPR. And if you're doing business in the EU and you don't have that, then you're in violation of GDPR, um, which means you could get sued. I think the likelihood of it, of it for a voice actor is pretty low, but um, certainly corporations have now had experiences where they've faced um, legal consequences for not having that. So having a, a privacy policy is a good idea. There are a variety of ways to get one. You can hire a lawyer to write one. You can find a privacy policy generator online. There's a lot of um, ones out there. Or you could write your own. Um, writing your own probably would be the, the least legally binding one, because, unless you're an attorney. Um, so I, I would say generally you want to either have a lawyer do it or find one online and just modify it to the needs of your website. You know, For example... Most voice actors are not going to be doing e-commerce. So anything that talks about e-commerce, just delete that. And um, it, it should be pretty easy to tailor to that. All righty. We've got another question here uh, along the same lines from the same person, actually. When do we know, you know, I mean, I've been doing this since, you know, the Nixon administration, but when somebody is just starting out, when do you think they're ready to have a website? Because there's a lot of people out there. They're like, you know, I go through websites and I'm like, this person hasn't done anything. When, when do you know you're ready for a website? When Bob Woodward writes about you. There you go. <laughs> Would want to take that one. Well, I mean, it could be when you have your demos ready, 
I mean, if you are ready to have your demos done and produced, you want to get it out there in front of eyeballs. You want to get it in front of agents, uh, creative, uh, um, you know, uh, casting directors, producers. So if you're ready for your demos and they're done, you're ready for a website. If you don't have your demos done, like Karen alluded to before, I mean, yeah, you're probably not ready, but you are ready to start direct marketing, getting your website in front of more people. So that's, and it doesn't have to be elaborate. I know people put the pressure on themselves. Well, I don't have much to, to show. It doesn't, you don't have to show a whole lot. Um, you know, like we've been talking about, just keep it clean and simple, uh, professional looking. I mean, I think um, episodes back when um, you're talking with Joe, uh, probably years ago, I mean, agents, when they go to a site, they just want to see this, 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 and this, and that's it. They just, they're in and out. So make it as easy for them as possible. Have your demos, contact information, all the things that Karen listed before. But yeah, if you have your demos, you're ready. Let's get it out in front of eyeballs. And we have different packages tailored to your needs. I mean, if you just want uh, a basic site, it can be short, can be long. Um, we have some uh, marketing tools, uh, uh, part of our packages. So that might be, um, you know, more suitable for if you're really planning some big marketing pushes. So we tailor those packages to you. And, um, but yeah, when you have your demos, let's do it. All righty. A uh, question from Bob Leadham. Do you include branding elements in your website designs? I would imagine you are. And you do. Yeah. Who wants to take that one? Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll go. Again. I, 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 sorry, I don't mean to, to hog it all, but um, but yeah, we, like I said before, we always have an eye towards branding. Uh, we listen to your demos. You know what what genres do you want to uh, go after? Um, and like I said, we may not land on anything right off the bat. You don't have to. It may evolve over time. I mean, mine did. I mean, I started my website years ago, and then I redid it through Voice Hacker websites, and then even after that, I came back and did a little bit more rebranding. So. Um, absolutely. We always try to have an eye towards, it could be color schemes. It could be a logo. Um, it could be, you know, a tagline. And you know, it's funny when we talk about taglines, people say, well, I need to have something snazzy, but no, you don't have to. But you know, oftentimes when people talk about themselves, I'm jotting things down. I'm jotting down notes when they're talking about themselves, they are usually coming up with their own brand and they don't even realize it. Well, they may, but, um, they're usually saying these catch little phrases, or something about them and their interests that tie that that ties themselves into voiceover. And I'm like, I realize, like, hey, do you know what you just said? That could be your brand right there. So we always have an ear and an eye towards branding. Yeah. Yeah. And that branding is one of those things that it's I think it's a total mystery to a lot of people. Unless yeah. after a while you know what kind of stuff you're getting hired for. Mm -hmm. And and that really is your brand. But of course, you can expand out in lots of different areas. But to somebody who's new. That can be very, very confusing. So you have to yeah. really see where you, where you uh, get hired for. Uh, now, Joe, you mentioned a little bit about you know social media. Now, who's in charge of social media? That's Laura, right? And or Alan is in charge of that. How important is in integrating uh, social media into your uh, into your website? I think the thing is, it all feeds into the same boat. Um, your website is your number one marketing tool, um, but. We have to think about the last 18 months, uh, both as a part of this and separately. We are creatures of communication and relationship. You know, if we were working in an office, maybe we would go in, we would sit at the booth, we would do our job and then we would go home. But in voiceover, we are connecting with people. So whether it be the client that we're delivering a product to, uh, a casting director, um, whoever's in our ears in a remote session, uh, a sound engineer, we are connecting with people. And that means that uh, our, our web presence is really important because if I'm working with a client in New Zealand, well, they don't know a great deal about me other than what is on my social media and my website. And I think the, 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 the final takeaway on, on this is to make sure the content is parallel. So it's great if you have just posted um, three amazing testimonials, which you've had from three amazing clients in the last couple of weeks on your social media platform but then if your website's last blog or uh, update was 2017 well there's there's some inconsistent uh, inconsistency there uh, you'll want to keep both fairly parallel to really maximize um your, your marketing push with your website mm -hmm. all right we are going to take a little break here we would love to get your websites on here so this crack team of a voice selector websites can take a look at it and let's see what your website is doing for you 
or perhaps not doing. So stay tuned for that. Give, give, give the URL right into the chat room, wherever you are. And we'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on voiceover body shop after this. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice of a Body Shop. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate, transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Before. Hi, here I am in my normal workspace with a question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and the coaching team at VRHeroes.com want to know. They're creating new courses and training, and they want to know what you need most. And it's easy to let them know. Just drop an email to david at voheroes.com. That's david at voheroes.com. And let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it auditioning? Is it about booking more work? Finding an agent? Podcasting? Audiobooks? Performance questions? Whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or what you've always wanted to know about success in VO. Email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we are back with our humongous panel of voice actor website experts. Again, if you want, want us to take a look at your website, Throw it in the chat room. You guys are being a little shy about it, but we do have one uh, from Diana Dudley. You want to throw that one up there, George? Sure thing. I've never seen our chat room so shy. What's going on uh, tonight? Yeah, come on. There's lots of you in there. <laughs> they're going to be gentle, and they're going to give you a lot of help. So this is a really, really good Positive thing. All right. Here's our first one. Okay. Who wants to take this one on first? I will make one. Observations. I don't see the demos and I don't see the contact information. I like the the colors. I like that it's bright, but I want to hear you and hire you. Yeah, let's see what happens when we scroll. So there is a button dead center for my demo reel. Uh -huh. And so I'm assuming if I click that, it pops down to the demo reel. Yeah, that's what it does. Okay. So I, I think um, I, I agree with what Karen said. I'm, I'm glad that the, the button scrolls down and I, I like the colors. Um, I, I think it, it's memorable and I, I will remember it tomorrow when I'm thinking about the, the show today. Um, 
but the when a an agent or a casting director or producer, basically any talent seeker that's looking, they're generally not looking at one person's website and then hiring that person right away. They're looking at many. And so the more time you add to their day, the, uh, you know, if everybody adds a minute, if each, you know, website um, adds an extra minute, then, and they look at 60 websites, it's an hour. So I think having the, the demos above the fold, if possible, above the fold means without having to scroll is a, a really good idea. So um, if you had a bunch of demos, it might be hard to fit in there with that graphic. But I think with one demo, which I, I think you had just one, um, you probably could move it up above the fold. And then on that contact form, uh, yeah, so that, that's above the fold. I, I think the demo would fit there nicely. So on the contact form, um, if you are separating first name and last name because of uh, say maybe a CRM that you're using, so if you um, are dumping contacts into a CRM for management, that's a, a, a decent reason to have first name and last name separated. But otherwise, I would make it just one field and say name because the the more you make someone work to contact you, the less likely they are to go through with it. And so um, I know it sounds silly, but when you have uh, millennial producers who don't necessarily um, want to fill out a long form, even a, an extra field or two can be a, a challenge to get them to do it. So uh, I, I like the form. I think it's it's great but I would just consolidate the first name and last name. And there's then, actually a comment about demos just cause it brought, came up from Ron. Um, they're saying demos plural. Are there actually ever websites for people just starting out with just one demo in one genre? Do they have specific recommendations for the number of demos and genres? So I guess there's a concern like, Oh, should there be more than one demo? How many demos am I supposed to have? Anybody else want to take that, that or start? Do you, so you, you can definitely start out with one demo. I know traditionally most people start out with a commercial demo because um, most people want to do commercial. It's a sexy genre. Um, but it's if you have the budget and you can do it, it's nice to have more than one, um, more than one genre that you're targeting. Uh, you can also, if you only have one and you want to make it a little fuller, you can always separate out your tracks so you can have your commercial demo and then your cut up tracks and you can either label them by descriptors of your voice, how you sound in those reads or by going more granular. So for example, if within your commercial demo, you have a family commercial, a political commercial, automotive commercial, little cuts, little tracks, and you separ separate them out, you can label them that way as well. So, but yeah, if you have the budget, it's nice to have more than one demo. Uh, George, can you bring the, the site back up again? Sure. So um, in the footer, is, is it scrolled all the way to the bottom? I'll scroll all the way down. There we go. Okay. So um, I I like that your phone number and email address are on there, but I would probably pull it up above that menu and, and maybe put it either above the contact form or, or immediately below it because um, as you saw when you scroll down to there, we didn't see it and it kind of looks like the bottom of the site. So someone might miss it. And you, ultimately, as Karen said before, the goal is to get someone to hear you and then to hire you. You wanna make those things as easy as possible and then put a copyright notice on it. So uh, at the bottom, I think it, it was just the, the contact information, throw up a, a copyright 2021, all rights reserved in the name of your business. And it's a good place to put that privacy policy that we were talking about earlier because the privacy policy, no one's actually going to read it. Um, you don't need to make it prominent at all. Just put it in that footer by the, the copyright notice, and that will um, get that out of the way. Uh, could you scroll up a little bit also? Sure. I'm also playing with playing with the actual size of the browser window a little bit, just to mm -hmm. see how the site reacts. You know, is it what gets cropped off? How does it handle different resolutions? That's important. Responsive. Yeah. How far do you want me to go? Uh, right there. Okay, so um, the the photo, uh, if you, could you um, right click and inspect it? Yeah, I'll do uh, inspect. Let's see, uh, because of the way I'm sharing the screen, 
you don't get to see that. Uh, but I can okay. fix that, I think. It, it's okay. I can just All right. comment on it. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is that when you have a photo, there's something called alt text. And it stands for alternative text. It's, it was initially created for people who are visually impaired so that uh, text reader or website readers could read to them what a website was about. But search engines very quickly picked that up and said, we're going to use this as a, a ranking signal to understand what's in the image. And so um, you want to make sure that you always tag your, your photos or any images on your site with alt text. And so um, I'm not sure if it was done on this site or not, but that's just a, a little tip for you to, to do. And you want to have it be relevant to what the photo is and ultimately what you want your website to rank for in a search engine. So um, in this case, it might be Diana's name and then, you know, pro female voice talent uh, or a dynamic uh, voice actor, something like that. I, I noticed that you mentioned that you're in Idaho. And so um, I, there are absolutely reasons to mention uh, a certain area. Uh, like if you're in LA and you, you're gonna be doing work in person, or if you um, have a certain dialect that you're, you're going after and people uh, are, are booking that dialect. Um, with, uh, Idaho, I actually, I don't know if there's a, a big voiceover industry there. And of course the beauty of voiceover is you can do it from anywhere. Um, but it's just something to think about that. Like if I, if someone puts Wisconsin on their website, I automatically have some idea of what they're going to sound like, even if they don't have a, a accent from Wisconsin. So there's things that pre bias the listener, uh, that say, okay, this person is going to sound like this. And so all these things to, to um, I think nothing should be put up on your website without there being a reason for it. And you also don't want to leave things out um, that are, are needed. So just think about all those, everything that goes up there. And um, I ultimately, I, I think it, it, it works with the blue and the blue and uh, Diana's shirt, although it's a, a little bit of a, a different hue. Uh, can you scroll up a little bit more? Sure thing. And um, can you click on the thing that says hear more work? Sure, just down a little bit. And can I interject real quick? Please. The one thing, there's, there's a lot of color and then the demo is just muted. It's so light. Like I would want to make that pop so that I see that as I'm scrolling. Ah, right, there's, there's more the, stuff there. Okay, there's there's more the main else. demos page, got it. But those should be out front initially though, shouldn't they? I, I was thinking the same thing. So um, if this was a, a massive website with, you know, hundreds of pages or, or dozens of pages, and there are plenty of voice talent that have sites like that, um, then it, it, it's a, a good idea to break it down. But if all your demos are just sitting on one page, I would at least pull some of these to the, to the front because on the first two times that George scrolled, I actually missed that button. And so I, I didn't see... And it looks like you, you actually have a lot more up here than I originally um, realized. Yeah. So uh, I would maybe either put all of these or, or pull some of them onto the homepage and uh, make, if you're going to have a button to go deeper to a demos page, make it um, very noticeable. I, I would also put some contact information at the top. So maybe uh, like above that menu on the right where it says home and work. and I, I would also add a, a third menu option that says contact or hire me or something like that, because um, after hearing you, that's the, the most important thing that they could do. And uh, especially on, on mobile, people rely on those menus to, to navigate down. So um, I, I think I would add at least that one more menu item there. Yeah. All right. So you okay. like to see more information at a glance. I think that's the what I'm boiling down from what you guys are saying. Right. Well, a lot of people say, you know, they don't want to click. They don't want to have to search for things. So if you have it front and center, you're taking that frustration away from them. You know, somebody might land on this and go, oh, there's only one demo. They might think there's no other demos on there. And they might not, you know, search and look around to see if they can find more. 
because at, at first glance, it looks like there's one. So maybe like Joe said, it would be a great idea to pull some more into that home page. And maybe, like I said, if you have the ability to make it brighter, like the other colors on your site, so it's it stands out and it catches my eyes. I'm scrolling. Yeah. Let me let me ask this because it's always emphasized to me that you've it's got to be mobile friendly. Most people aren't sitting on their computer anymore; they're just on their phone, and they're like, "Well, oh, what's this person do? How do you make it mobile friendly?" Who wants to take oh, that one? Sorry, I was busy on my phone. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> what's the process of making it mobile friendly go ahead joe after you karen please okay. um so you know a site has to be built to be mobile responsive it's part of the process uh most people who build websites they know to do that it's now google is indexing websites and looking at them from a mobile perspective first so it's a mobile first index so you definitely want to make sure that it it works on all devices. If you um, if you use a site builder or something like that, some of them make you build the site twice. Some themes on those sites don't let you have both options. So just make sure that wherever you're building it, however you're doing it, if you're doing it on your own, you have the ability to have people view your site on mobile, tablet, and desktop. And, and the best way to do that is to have a responsive site. So uh, when when the mobile web first became a thing, people were building a mobile website and a desktop website. And there's been this shift towards responsive web design, which means that whatever the, the screen size is, your website reformats according to that screen size shift. And uh, that's what George was doing before, you know, kind of playing with it in and out. So th the website should, uh, whether it's a, a big desktop or a small desktop or a big laptop or a small laptop or a um, an iPad or a uh, Amazon Kindle or a, a you know a, a note uh, phone or a, a very small um, I don't know, I can't think of the name of a small uh, phone <laughs> screen but anyway you get the point it should for reformat to um, be for all different sizes not like size a B and C but every single size and that that is pretty standard nowadays um so anybody who, who knows what they're doing with web development should be doing it that way and if you're doing it yourself uh depending on what platform you're doing it on there's uh, tutorials or um some of them will, will have it built in okay we've got time for a couple more questions george there's one there from michelle coke all right let me go grab that let's see i see z her er Patricia Andrea, right above that. Oh, there it is. It was, an, I saw the red and I was like, that's not me. Um, <laughs> I had done, uh, Michelle says I had mine done in early 2019. Isn't that long ago, but when is it a good time to update your site? I don't know if that means update content or give it a makeover. Yeah, really. Uh, update content over? all the time. Um, you should always be updating your site if you can. Yeah. Uh, makeover is a much more subjective question. Anybody want to take that? So let's show them my old website. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 12 years old. Yeah. Well, and you're not even a voice actor. Laura, you got a thought on that? <laughs> Everybody's muted. Okay. No, Laura is not uh, muted. Go ahead. I'm not muted. You can hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. I think that, um, you know, you're going to want to keep up with the times. You're going to want your website to look modern and fresh and, you know, relevant to what's going on in the world. Um, so you're going to want to, it's basically up to you. You're going to update it as much as you want, whenever you want. And it, it's not set in stone. Like when we were talking about before, oh, I have to have a brand already. Well, you don't. You don't have to have that all laid out. You just want to get your name and your demos out there and your contacts information and then evolve let, let the website evolve as you evolve and don't be afraid to change things and try things and try new colors um, but the one thing you have to remember too is that websites are built um, we also have to please the google search algorithms so you know we have to do things like make sure that the site speed is there so if you've done made a beautiful website and all this content on it and it's super slow then it, that's going to hurt you when it comes to ranking. 
So those are things that kind of go on in the back end and you need an expert, somebody that can, you know, handle doing all the coding and all of that to make sure that your site is running as quickly as it can. Yeah, and, and also from a human standpoint, people don't want the site to load forever because they're going to think something's wrong with it. And you don't know what kind of internet somebody speed has or where they're at. And so you definitely want to make sure that your site is running quickly from an SEO standpoint and from a human standpoint. Somebody standpoint. could be looking at your website on dial-up. <laughs> Good point. On dial-up? Uh, <laughs> 14 <-4 modem. laughs> so, Something that Laura said um, reminded me of, uh, I, I think, a, a good thing to think about when either you're building your website for the first time or if you're thinking about rebuilding it. There are essentially two ways that a, a website is useful to a voice talent. One is extension of your business card, meaning you've had some sort of interaction with a talent seeker uh, or potential talent seeker, and you're sending them there to hear you and hire you. The other is something that drives business that you haven't actively engaged with that person. And that's the process of search engine optimization being found when people are searching for something related to what you're providing, but not you specifically. So if I'm looking for Dan Leonard, I'm going to find his website. But if I'm looking for wow. a, um, a, a guy to do e-learning with Dan's voice characteristics, am I going to find Dan's website? And so that's where, where SEO comes in. So I think there, neither website is mutually exclusive. Um, you can do a site that is both of those things, an extension of a business card and also a site, an SEO site, or you can just do one. Um, at, but defining that before you start is a good idea because the, the process is a little bit different depending on, on your end goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got one more question here from Zyz ER, or it's Zyz Er. Says, uh, for a voiceover who is bilingual in Spanish and English, what is your recommendation in creating a website? What to highlight or, or to have on the first page? Or do you have a, a system where you can like, if you're Spanish speaking, it will come up Spanish. And if you're not, or how do how you Oof. work something like that? That's a good question. Marque dos para español, para inglés marque uno. <laughs> is that really li literally what you would do? <laughs> Can you have buttons on the top that select the language and it would change it dynamically? You you certainly can do that, yes. So I, I said that to be playful, but um, yes, you certainly can have a, a website that shifts from one to the other. Karen, I think you had something to say, so I, I want to let you take that. I forgot I was muted. <laughs> I was just saying, yeah, you could definitely do that. Uh, there's different ways to address it. First of all, um, if you're writing it in Spanish, then if somebody's searching for a voice actor in Spanish, then your site would come up. If somebody's searching for a Spanish speaker in English, you want the text to be in English. So there's there's a different th difference there. And uh, you could do both. You could do it by, you know, a button that changes your whole site from one language to another. You could have certain sections like your bio if you just want to toggle that from English to Spanish or whatever language it is. But you also want to have the text on the site that say your bilingual voice talent, the languages you speak, uh, that you voice, so that you know you have that visibility on the web. And people, right when they land, they know, boom, they do both languages. All righty. Well, folks, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Again, if uh, you want to work with any of these folks, go on over to voiceactorwebsites.com. And uh, they're a great operation. Uh, they specialize in voice actor websites, which is why they have that particular URL. So make sure you use that. Uh, Joe, uh, Karen, Cameron, Laura, and... God, I remember the Their last names name. were there. They Where'd they go? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alan, Alan, Karen, Laura, okay. Joe... Thanks Cameron. for being with us tonight. Thank you, everybody. All righty. Well, we're going to end this for tonight, and uh, we'll be back with Tech Talk in a little bit, so don't go away. But uh, thanks to our folks at uh, voiceactorwebsites.com. We will be right back after these messages. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. 
Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's that time of the show where we talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, which is a tool that every voice actor who is really ready to leap out of the bottom feeder voiceover work, a lot of the pay to plays, <laughs> um, and want to get up into the next level, which is working with the top studios, the top productions, the ones that want to direct you real time, that are very sensitive to how they use their time, and therefore the ones that tend to pay and make the most money. Um, those are the ones that use Source Connect. And that's a very good reason to have it in your studio and have your studio ready for Source Connect. It's one thing to have the software, but if your studio isn't up to par to that, another studio can record yours and make it sound like you're actually in theirs, then you may not be quite ready. And you want to find out that, you want to know if you're ready. Um, so I highly recommend getting a sound check from Dan or I. Dan does his specimen cup. I do the sound checks. And we'll tell you whether you're ready for Source Connect. And when you're ready, get that 15-day free trial. Get it up and running. Become familiar with it. And if you're really serious about this, maybe you're already using Source Connect, you might want to get certified with your home studio as a Source Connect studio, which shows producers and everybody out there that you're not just knowing what Source Connect is. You really know how to use it. You know how to keep it running correctly. So these are all things you can do over at sourceelements.com. So head over there, get yourself set up with your account, get started experimenting and learning. And we're here to help you if you have any trouble. All right, we'll be right back here with our panel to check out some voiceover websites and see how they're doing right after this message. All righty. Well, a fascinating hour there. I mean, there's lots of stuff you got to know about your website and, and folks at voice actor websites, they know their stuff. So no uh, doubt. make sure you go on over there. Uh, who are our donors of the week? All right. We got Shauna Pennington Baird. Yes. Icon productions, our friend, Martha, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Sandra Manwiller, Robert Leadham, and Uncle Roy's Antland Productions are all recurring donors. Yes. Next week on this very show, we've got Tech Talk number 67, which George and I are about to do, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. We want your tech questions on your home voiceover studio, and uh, we will be happy to answer those, and along with George's tech update and a demonstration on mic technique. So... You're either watching that next week or you're going to watch it live right now and give us your question. So we'd like <laughs> to hear from you. Uh, again, thanks to uh, all the folks over at Voice Actor Websites for uh, joining us tonight and giving us their insight on how to get the right stuff into your uh, website. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC Demos. Demos. Thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room tonight and giving us uh, all those questions and, of course, relaying the uh, websites to us. And uh, it, I guess we have to thank George. You have to thank me because we were directing tonight. Couldn't yeah. you tell? Could you tell? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. That's going to do it for he us this there. week. Yeah. Was Lee in there? I didn't see yes. Okay. Anyway. We're going to re-rack re it for Tech Talk, but uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Jeff gets to get in there for his.